my box of stuff. Um, not all of this is priming stuff, but I like to keep things kind of contained in a basket. So when I want to gesso, I just grab the whole basket down. It's got everything I need. Um, we'll talk about these things as we use them. But the first thing I've got, what I'm, what I'm working on is MDF board. Um, you can get the, this is like quarter inch. You can get it at, um, sometimes a Home Depot has it, but it's, it's MDF. It's not masonite. It's a medium density fiber board. I really like it. It's, it's same color on both sides. It's not really slick. It's got a nice surface. Okay, first thing I do is um, take my sandpaper. This is kind of a heavy 150 sandpaper and a sanding block. I really like using a sanding block because it just really helps you to get the surface, cover a lot of surface with the least amount of effort. So I give it a good sanding before I start. kind of to rough up the surface and what I'm starting on is a uh, drop cloth covered table and I like to use a couple sticks to prop the panels up on because there'll be drips and things and if I have it sitting right on a newspaper or drop cloth I'll have to peel those drips off and separate the panel from the, the back so this just kind of makes it float and it, it works a little better so uh, the gesso I'm going to use today is a heavier gesso. It's the Utrecht Professional Gesso. Comes in a comes in different different sizes. I like to get the big size, but you can see that it's um, it's a lot thicker than maybe other ones you've used like this. This is this is not bad either. Sometimes I'll use this, a Liquitex gesso, but it, it's kind of a more of a liquidy consistency. Well this is more paste-like and it seems to give a little heavier coverage. So I'm going to take it out of there with putty knife. Just get some on here. And I'll just kind of follow along behind this with my brush. This is a trim brush. I think I got this at Home Depot. It's a bristle brush. It's pretty stiff. Got a short handle on it, which I like. And so I like to, I just do random strokes. Um, you can do it this way and then do another coat this way, but then you get these ridges, these ridges going in this direction and this direction. I kind of like the random brush strokes. This stuff also drips a lot less than your uh, thinner gessos. I'm going to sand this when it dries too. Not trying to get a really thick coat on, but you know, I definitely don't want to see the brown surface underneath. So working my way down here, I can already feel that that stuff is drying up up there. These boards come in, it's four foot square, or four feet by eight feet. So unless you have a, a saw, wherever you get them, usually you can tape per cut and have them cut it for you. Okay, we'll let that one sit and dry. Okay, so I'm back. It's been about two hours. And this is, this is dry. This is really good, nice and dry. You can see the surface, you can see the wood through here a little bit. That's okay because this is your, our first coat and I'm gonna sand this. I wanna take the ridges down. I want to um, not make it a super smooth surface, but take the ridges down and also this is gonna give it more tooth for the next coat. So take a paper towel. I like to just kind of wipe off some of the white dust Okay, and get back 
to more gesso. I put my brush in a baggie in the meantime between the first and second coat. I don't want it to dry out and I really don't want to wash it because you know there's a there's a ton of gesso in here. It's got a lot of pigment. It's kind of a mess to wash. So why should I when I can just uh, I'm going to be using it in a couple hours. Put it in a baggie, put a rubber band around it and it's still totally usable. Just about the same thickness of a coat. Oh, it's about a quarter at a time. And just kind of scrubbing it in with random brush strokes. And where there's some heavier stuff, just move it around, pick it up on the brush. One thing I like too about this heavier gesso, it doesn't have as much water in it or liquid as the uh, stuff in the pourable bottles. So it has less of a tendency to warp your wood. There's not as much moisture. And it also dries faster because there's not as much moisture. But you don't need to do this, you know, you don't need an industrial setting, any place special to do this. There's no fumes. You can just do it in your house. Just find a place where, you know, the cat won't walk across it or something. All right, so uh, we'll be back in another couple hours. Okay, two hours later, totally dry. I'll give this one more sanding and it's done. So that's all there is to it. Priming your own panels is easy. Give it a try.